Well, more than 40 million echocardiograms have been performed in the U.S. alone. But many may not know this standard heart imaging technique was developed right here in Indiana. Homegrown Hoosier Dr. Harvey Feigenbaum received an award this week that honors his legacy as the father of echocardiography. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has more. Kylie. Thank you, Gary. Er Gary, earlier this week at the Indiana Life Sciences Summit, BioCrossroads presented Dr. Feigenbaum with the 2020 August Watanabe Life Sciences Champion of the Year Award. He's recognized internationally for pioneering the echo, which is the use of ultrasound to examine the heart. Mastered by Dr. Feigenbaum in 1965, the echo is now the most widely used heart imaging technique in the world and is credited for saving millions of lives. He joins me now to talk about his recent award and share his very very interesting story. Dr. Feigenbaum, thanks for being on the show today. Well, it's my pleasure. And congratulations on your award as well. I think one of the neatest parts of your story is that taking, you, uh, taking us back to the 1960s when you were developing it, you said you faced a lot of skepticism. So tell us uh, about that and how you were able to overcome that skepticism. Well, it, it, it is an interesting story. Uh, the skepticism was based on several factors. Uh, first of all, I had the misfortune of having a, uh, another heart test that was touted by a very established cardiologist uh, in Philadelphia. It was called ballistocardiography. Uh, it was touted as the next best heart test that was going to be, and it turned out to be a bust. And that uh, downfall occurred not long before I said, I've got the next best cardiology test. And uh, they also said, well, look, we, 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 uh, the other doctor was an established doctor, and it turned out you're just a 30-year-old nobody from Indiana. Uh, who's going to listen to you as the, having a, a major test? To make matters worse was that I wasn't the first to use ultrasound to examine the heart. Uh, it has started at least 10 years earlier uh, by several people, but one in particular in Sweden. Uh, and uh, he had a Siemens instrument that was uh, and his, uh, from a, a co-worker uh, whose father uh, was actually a Nobel Prize winner uh, for physics. Anyway, uh, after about working about five years in it, uh, the co-worker, the physicist who worked with him, said there's no future here. Uh, they weren't certain, and uh, Siemens was obviously disappointed. They hired the leading cardiologist in the world, uh, Paul Dudley White. He was uh, Eisenhower's private physician and one of the founders of the American Heart Association. He visited this doctor in Sweden. He looked at the ultrasound and agreed, there's no future here. It's nonsense. Uh, well. That was known. And the application that they were touting did turn out to be nonsense. And so when I came out with a new application, they said, here we go again. <laughs> so that's uh, starting it all. Well, I, I know I you were convinced. able to overcome so many challenges yeah. and break through those barriers. I think another important part of your story is that all of this occurred. You developed all of this right here in Indiana. And that's really an important piece of your story that you want to get out there. Yeah, I've always said that. Uh, the difference between Indianapolis and Boston is that Boston takes the opinion, if it's not developed in Boston, it can't be any good. Uh, here in Indiana, we usually say, well, if it's developed in Indiana, it must not be good. Uh, no, I, I, one of the feature, reasons I enjoyed this particular award, because it did come from Indiana, and I want the people of Indiana to be proud of the fact that here we had the world's leading uh, ultra, uh, leading heart uh, uh, imaging or uh, taking pictures of the heart was developed right here in Indiana by a homegrown Hoosier. I, outside for the year in Philadelphia as an intern, I've lived my entire life here in Indi the state of Indiana. And I'm going to share your age, Dr. Feigenbaum. You're 87, about to turn 87, very much not retired. You still teach, you still do research, you still read clinical echocardiograms. And uh, just give us a quick explanation. You're also in the startup community here in uh, Indiana. Uh, in the 1980s, uh, I uh, felt that we needed to convert from videotape to digital. And I had some experience with digital, which I said, my God, that's the way we have to go. 
Well, that was a challenge. And I had some local uh, IU computer and engineers that work on something, but it was very crude, not very good. So it so happened that my son, uh, who was a, uh, a former aerospace engineer for TRW in California, but moved back to Indiana to develop some uh, scientific software. And I asked if his people could help uh, develop a technique for uh, recording and uh, displaying echocardiograms digitally. Well, I told him what I wanted, and in a relatively short period of time, he gave me what I wanted, and I, I, he, he blew me away. And your son uh, has now started now, his own company, right? Well, he, he actually, the company was started. I just found a new application for it. He was teaching, it was, uh, was uh, an engineering product uh, which is just uh, for, for everything, not just as, as echocardiography. Well, I think uh, that I, the DNA I is in the way. Yeah, he has uh, some very smart DNA <laughs> in him. So well, I'd like well, to think that. I hate anyway, to I hate um, to cut you off, Doctor Feigenbaum, but we're out of time. Sure. It's so hard because you have such a great story to tell. Uh, but congratulations on your award. You really are an exemplary Hoosier. Doing uh, that have done some amazing things and still doing. Thanks for being on the show today. Oh, thank you. And Gary, back to you.